this video, I'm going to be giving you guys an introduction to vertical angles and adjacent angles. And if you look at our screen, we've got three different diagrams here. And then underneath it, we've got these definitions for vertical angles and adjacent angles. So what I'm going to do first is just use these diagrams to explain to you guys what vertical angles are and what adjacent angles are. And then on the next two slides, we're actually going to go through some problems where we're going to apply these definitions. So first, let's talk about vertical angles, and it says that vertical angles are pairs of opposite angles made by intersecting lines, and then it says that vertical angles are congruent, which means they have the same measures. So we're going to be looking at the first diagram because this first diagram has two lines that are intersecting. Remember, intersecting just means crossing over each other. So I'm just going to write down some pairs of vertical angles so that you understand what they are. So the first pair of vertical angles in this diagram are angles 1 and 4. So I'm going to write 1 and 4 are vertical angles. And then also 3 and 2. So it's basically the angles that are across from each other are opposite of each other when two lines intersect. And remember, those angles are going to be congruent. So I can say that angle 1, or the measure of angle 1, is equal to the measure of angle 4. And I can say that the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 2. And those are the only pairs of vertical angles we have in that diagram. And we don't have any pairs of vertical angles in the next two diagrams because we don't have any lines that are fully like crossing over each other. So now we're going to move on to adjacent angles. So adjacent angles are angles sharing a common side and a common vertex. So I'm going to be using the second two diagrams to explain what adjacent angles are. So if we look at the middle diagram with angles 5 and 6, we can see that angles 5 and 6 share this side right here. So they both have that common side and they have a common vertex. So remember a vertex is the point at which the two rays that form the, the angle meet. So they both share this vertex here. So angles 5 and 6 are adjacent angles. And there's no rule about adjacent angles being congruent. Um, sometimes they're going to add up to 90, sometimes they'll add up to 180, sometimes they just add up to some random degree measure, but they're not necessarily congruent. So I will show you guys what I mean when we go over some problems in the next couple slides. And then in this third diagram, I wanted to show you guys that these angles are not adjacent. And the reason is because they don't share a common vertex or fully a common side. So angle 8 has this entire line as a side. Whereas angle 7 only has part of that line as its side. And then if we look at the ver vertices of the angles, they're not the same either. So angle 8 has a vertex that's right here, and angle 7 has a vertex that's right here. So even though they are touching each other, these are not adjacent angles. So I'm going to write 7 and 8 are not adjacent angles. And then just to show you guys that you can have adjacent angles in different forms, we're going to go back to that first diagram. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to erase the colors that I put on here. So we've got a bunch of adjacent angles in this diagram. So first, let's take a look at angles 1 and 2. So they share this side right here, and they share this vertex right here. So angles 1 and 2 are adjacent. I'm just going to put it like that, adjacent. We can also say that angles 1 and 3 are adjacent because they, saw, they share this side right here and they share their vertex right here. So we're going to say 1 and 3 are adjacent. And if we keep going around, we can say that angles 3 and 4 are adjacent. They share a vertice and a side, so we're going to say 3 and 4 are adjacent. And finally, we can say that 2 and 4 are adjacent because they also share a side and a vertice or a vertex. So hopefully this gave you guys a little bit of an introduction as to visually what vertical angles and adjacent angles are. Um, and now we're going to jump into some problems involving these types of angles. So for all these problems, we just want to solve for the value of every variable. So let's jump into example 1. So in example 1, we have these two intersecting lines, and we know that one of the angles is 40 degrees. So we can either use adjacent angles or vertical angles first to find one of the values of the variables. I'm going to start with vertical angles. So we know that the angle measuring 40 degrees and the angle measuring x degrees are vertical angles. 
and this is because they are opposite angles when two lines intersect. Therefore, they are congruent, or their measures are equal. So 40 degrees is the same as x degrees, which means that x is equal to 40. So this angle right here is also 40 degrees because vertical angles are always congruent. And now we're going to have to apply the property of adjacent angles. So we're going to have to use the definition of adjacent angles. So what we want to notice is that x is an adjacent angle to y. It's also adjacent to z, but I just picked y. And now what we have to notice is, well, what is true about x and y? What kind of angle do they form when they're next to each other? Well, this line right here is a straight line, which means that angle x and angle y form a straight line. And remember that a straight line always adds up to 180 degrees. So what we can say is that angle x plus angle y has to equal 180 degrees. And we know that angle x is 40 degrees. So 40 degrees plus angle y has to equal 180 degrees. And if we subtract 40 from both sides of this equation, we're going to get that angle y is equal to 140 degrees. So I'm going to write right here that this is 140 degrees. And now we can just use the property of vertical angles. We know that y and z are vertical angles. So I'll just write, write it like that. So that means y is equal to z. And since y is 140, we know that z is also 140 degrees. So in this problem, we use both vertical and adjacent angles to figure out all the values of the variables. So now let's take a look at example two. So we don't have any lines that are fully crossing over each other, so we don't have any vertical angles. So we're going to have to use adjacent angles. So angle, the angle measuring x degrees and the angle measuring 55 degrees are adjacent angles. And what you want to notice is that they form a right angle because this little squares right here. So this means they form a right angle. And right angles have a measure of 90 degrees. So now we want to think, can we set up an equation to figure out what x is based on the fact that those two angles form a right angle? And we can. We can say that the angle measuring x degrees plus the angle measuring 55 degrees have to add up to 90 degrees because they form a right angle. And now we can easily solve for x by just subtracting 55 degrees from both sides of our equation. And if you subtract 55 degrees from both sides of your equation, you're going to get that x is equal to 35 degrees. Let's go over a couple more examples. So these next two examples are a little bit trickier because now we've got expressions for each angle that have more than just a variable. So let's jump into example three. So what we want to do is figure out which variable we can solve for first. So we have to look at the relationships between all these angles. So I'm just going to write down what I know about the relationships. So I know that angle Y has to equal angle Z because they are vertical. But that doesn't really help us because I don't know the value of y or z, so I can't really do much with that equation. I also know that this angle measuring x plus 10 is congruent to this angle measuring 2x minus 90 because those are also vertical angles. And now we've got this equation that has only x's in it, so we can actually solve this equation to find x. So what I'm going to do is subtract x from both sides first. On the left, I have 10. On the right, 2x minus x is x, so I have x minus 90. And now I'm just going to add 90 to both sides of my equation to get that 100 is equal to x. So I found the value of x, which is 100, and now I can use that to find the values of y and z. So what we want to do first is actually find the measures of these two angles right here, which again are congruent. So what we're going to do is just plug x back in. So if I plug x in here, I'll have 100 plus 110. So this angle right here is 110 degrees. So I'm just going to write it like that, which means this angle over here is also 110 degrees because they are congruent. And now we can use that fact to figure out what y and z are. So now this is similar to the last problem. We have to notice that this angle measuring 110 and this angle measuring y degrees form a straight line. So they form this straight line right here which means they're going to add up to 180 degrees. So we're going to set that up as an equation. We're going to say y plus 110 is equal to 180 degrees. We're going to subtract 110 from both sides of our, our equation to get that y is equal to 70. And now we know that y and z are equal, 
because they're vertical angles, so we know that z is also equal to 70. So now let's go through one more example. And I encourage you guys to try this one on your own, and then you can watch me work through it to make sure you've done it correctly. So when we're looking at example four, we are dealing with adjacent angles. So we have to think, what is the relationship between these two angles? So these two angles form a straight line. So what that means is that they're going to add up to 180 degrees. So we have to set up an equation that says that. So we're going to say that this angle that measures x plus 120 degrees plus the angle that measures x equals 180 because they form a straight line. And now we just want to solve this equation for x. So what we want to do first is combine like terms. So we're going to do x plus x is 2x. We still have this plus 120. And this is equal to 180. And now we need to get the x by itself. So we're going to subtract 120 from both sides of our equation. On the left, we're left with 2x. On the right, 180 minus 120 is 60. Finally, divide both sides by 2 to get that x is equal to 30. So hopefully this video gave you guys a little bit of an intro to vertical angles and adjacent angles. If you want some more practice with problems similar to the ones we worked through today, check out the link in our description for a free practice worksheet.